Um... Okay, wait, 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 wait. It worked. Oh my God. Hello everyone. <laughs> Okay, so this was totally my bad for streaming an hour early. And also, were, was that, did you get any, did anyone see the stream that I just did? Because I just went live for like five minutes and then I went onto my alternative account that I use for like lives and I wasn't live. So I just like stopped the live randomly. Anyways, that's other than the point. So today we're going to be reacting to train exploiting, and I was talking about trigger warnings because... Um, we're not going to be talking about the part that I'm sure if any, if anyone watched this, you're going to be like, I know what you're talking about. Um, because we're going to be talking about how, I don't know if I'm even pronouncing it right. We're going to be talking about how train splitting relates to the ADDICTION. I don't know why I would even assume that it's possible to not get demonetized on this. Hi, Eric, how are you doing? So if you guys didn't watch it, I don't think we're really going to be watching the ending part. So there's not going to be any crazy spoilers. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. But anyways, obviously true or content warning for a D D I C T I O N, you know, actually using H. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what? Okay, you know what? This is my bad. None of you guys asked me to. Hi, Eric. How are you doing today? Um, no, none of you guys asked me to actually show the movie. You just wanted me to talk about it, so that's on me. But, anyways, um. So, Transploiting is about a H-O-R-I-N, wait, is there an E at the end of this? Yes, there is, I believe. Uh, A-D-D-I-C-T, you guys are going to hate me for spelling this stuff out. Like, why? I'm just going to stop because it's ridiculous. Um, and honestly, all, it, although it was a movie, right? <laughs> I mean... I thought that to my own, I've like preface y'all, just to preface, I've never been addicted to H. <laughs> um, although we can talk about that in a second. I don't know. I feel weird talking about it in the first five minutes because YouTube is going to be like, that's not great for you. Um, I adore train exploiting. That's amazing. Okay. What is Okay, what is part two? Because I didn't watch part two. Very disappointing. Um, okay, because no one really understood. Wait. So, those who have ventured into the dark corners of addiction. I said it, y'all. <laughs> know that one of its few consolations, uh, once the fun has worn off, is the camaraderie of fellow practitioners. Substance abuse sets the user apart from daily lives out of ordinary people. No matter how well the addict may seem to be functioning, there is always a secret agenda. The knowledge of the drug of choice. Okay, what what is this? Why was it so accurate, though? Oh, yeah, also, my bad, y'all. Um, so I was supposed to go live. And then the other thing is then I, I literally put on my community tab. I was like, hey, you guys, just so you know, I'm going live at 1 p.m. What? Like, <laughs> when is 1 p.m.? Like, we live in the world. We all live in different time zones. <laughs> but um, I will definitely add time zones next time. And also, um, that was my bad for saying I was going to go live at 1 p.m. It's actually 3.07 p.m. for me right now, full disclosure. But at least I didn't go live at 4 p.m. I think that's a thumbs up. So substance abuse sets the user apart from, yeah, 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 yeah. No matter how hard the addict may seem to be functioning, the knowledge of the drug of choice is more important than the mundane business at hand, such as friends, family, job, play, and SEX. So yeah, definitely true. Like there's parts of this movie that were, in my opinion, clearly kind of taken from 
in addicts genuine experiences i don't know like there were some parts i guess that i was a little bit confused by such as like listen y'all i think it's really interesting the way that movie producers movie people <laughs> movie makers will make movies about addiction and try to it, try to encapsulate what it feels like to be h-i-g-h which is like go off i mean oh yeah but like also trigger warning though for i think i already said a literal h on camera i'm gonna try my very best not to get that on camera because you guys know and i know that you know that i know that that's disturbing that <laughs> and um but i also did appreciate like I don't know. There were so many parts of this movie that I found accurate, such as the way that the parents reacted, fam going through withdrawals, fam going back to drug of choice. And if you don't know what a drug of choice is, a DOC is generally, I don't know. Do addicts usually only have one drug of choice? <gasps> okay, so... Mm, I don't really, I don't know. My personal story is so boring, though. So hold on. We'll talk about it in a second. <laughs> um, because no one really under, can really understand that urgency as well as another addict. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. No, like, there are so many people, and even me, before I knew that I was struggling with addiction, um... Yeah, no, I had no idea. In fact, like, I got angry at loved ones who were struggling with addiction because I was like, how could you do that to our family? Like, and then that's why people say that only, really only people in recovery can help people in recovery because it's like trying to explain a color that you've never seen before. It's just impossible to put into words. What's up, Eric? Thank Eric. Thank you so much for being supportive right now. <laughs> Sometimes, wait. You know what? Okay. Um, I worked in harm reduction center. Going to leave out some details of the act uh, on the activism end, but it ran so true to both my experiences. Um, that of those I worked with and cared for. Oh, for real. Um. My late dear friend who was a Scottish addiction worker. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hi, Eva. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, so th I actually thought this movie did a great job. You know what I mean? J just to, like, fill in Eva and not Bob, even though I said that, like, five times already. Although, like I said, I've never... I really can't say particularly because I'm gonna be honest, y'all. The only time that I've had addiction in my life directly was with myself and a family, okay? Like personal stuff. Um, and it was benzos. So I can't relate. However, benzos are actually. I found that it was, it can be triggering for some people when you see the, um, how he's like completely out of it. Like you can slap him in the face. He's out. It's terrible. Yeah. Oh, I'm so, ha I'm so happy you guys liked it. I was, no, I knew that you guys would like it. I was waiting for y'all to be like, mm, this is an inaccurate representation. Um, if you wait. Okay, sorry. My dear late friend who was a Scottish addiction worker and had an H user and he would show train splitting in the group he ran. Thank you so much for sharing that. That makes this film like very special. Um, if you have, if you hadn't had the worst toilet in Scotland moment, you haven't lived a life. Okay, Eric and all. Why was there so many, as you, as, as you might say, if you will, shite scenes. There were a total of two shite scenes. Too, too many, okay? <laughs> so definitely, I just, I, I, I guess it was funny. Like, I was there for it. 
And it was, like, part of the plot line and, like, all of that. So go off. Um, Poly substance abuse is becoming an increasing issue, but the time train splitting was made, mono substance use was more common. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, y'all. My personal experience, nah. You can be addicted to multiple things. But, like, then it's, like, your drug of choice is the drug that you naturally, um... It just does something for your brain. Um, I was actually going to talk about how... I believe... Oh, I was going to look this up before. I knew this. I knew I was missing something. Um, but anyways, so basically traumatic experiences and addiction are very closely knit together. Uh, my sister, who... Katie, we love her. She is a sprite, a supporter of the Igrisil membership channel thing. Um, she's informed me that it's okay to talk about her addiction. And if anybody, I'm going to talk about my addiction before I talk about hers. But um, I'm, if anyone in recovery is like in the chat, I'm sure that it's sort of relatable to the way that like, okay, I will share these potentially very embarrassing stories about myself only to help other people struggling like if that makes any sense okay what's up y'all thank you thank you so much for being here stop stop this immediately the football team they played against in the in the film are recovered addicts who help the actors with their characters Although I will say, not Bob, I'm sure I, I'm sure you know, but you can't recover. You can't once you're an addict, you're always an addict. It's just about managing it. As in, like, I'm gonna, I, I, I listen, you guys. When I went to rehab, I we were twelve step. I know some people hate twelve step, and that is valid. You are valid. I, I struggle a little bit with a lot of it. <laughs> Some of it, some of it, not a lot of it. <laughs> I think I, like everyone should do 12 steps, even if you don't struggle with addiction. Um, hi, Eva. I already said hi to you. Hi, Never Wonder System. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, because that was totally my bad, you guys. Like I literally said I was going to go live at 1 p.m. with no giving you no time zone and then 4 p.m. giving you no time zone. And then I ended up going live at 3 p.m. So like I said, it means a lot. Um, I feel like I'm going to mispronounce this. Ewan McGregor was amazing in this film. I'm so sorry to this actor. Act absolutely. Actually, now that you mention it, the acting was so good that I forgot I was watching a movie. You know how like when you're, wa I'll stop rambling, but like when you're watching a movie and you know that they're, they know that they're acting, <laughs> whatever. Um... The film was made as part, partly a part of, as a part of activism. It was to expose people to the reality of that life. It did a great job. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know you guys. Like, I guess I can't really say that it's necessarily accurate because I have never. I mean, I guess statistically, yeah, but I don't know that every single H addict or addict in general will be robbing banks and such. I mean, obviously it can be, I, they didn't rob banks in the film, but um, th there's just different ways that people go about it. So this is one good example, right? And I could be wrong though. You know what I mean? Like it could be so that more percentage, I don't know that. <sighs> Danny Boyle really let his pol his political opinion known. Beautiful. Yeah, and I, I appreciated how in the movie, we're going to watch some clips, so hopefully, okay, if the live turns off, we would have talked about a lot of stuff so that <laughs> so that we, we don't have to, like, just go live again and just delete this one, which might happen still. Don't know yet. But 
I, you know what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start uploading clips to my channel. And if it gets like taken down, like privately, and if it gets taken down, then I won't show clips from that movie. Always thinking, Michelle, always thinking. Man, I can't believe this. I missed so I missed something cool. All good. Took a little nap after the system speak group meeting and woke up just in time for your awesomeness. LOL. So awesome for <laughs> so awesome. Um, thank you so much and for supporting the the movement. <laughs> the drug isn't the issue. JT's the inconsistencies uh, of the quality. It's inherently needing to do crime to even buy it. To exactly. Um, safe access programs have been extremely successful. Who, who, why, who, why am I getting a call from robo caller? That worries me. I, I'm not going to pick it up and not because I don't pick up my phone in general because I, I totally do. Um, Ewan sounds like you and, oh, that is, that's embarrassing. <laughs> Okay, let's just move past that. Pretend it never happened. That was totally my bad. Very disrespectful to the actor and anyone with that name, in fact. But anyways, so trauma triggers toxic stress chemicals within the brain, causing damage over time. When someone is stressed for long periods of time, it can rewire the brain, impacting activity and emotions. Um, so the connection between trauma and addiction... <clears throat> is that there is a clear connection between people who have suffered childhood trauma and addiction. If someone who, if someone had at least four traumatic encounters, they are way more likely to develop alcohol use disorder, some more likely to develop substance use disorder, and 60% more likely to become obese. Addic additionally, I mean, I guess food can kind of be like an addiction, although I'm gonna be straight, y'all. I don't know the difference between binge eating disorder and food addiction. Like, I kind of have an idea. Still don't know, though. Um, additionally, one's environment can be significant a significant link. If someone is around specific substances and needs a way to cope, the substance can be become a way of self-medication. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what am I getting at? Yeah, so I was talking to my sister about this, and we were like, she was like, so you can give anyone, for example, this won't be every addict, but like for, let's say alcohol, you can give anyone alcohol, but the second they have like a, li like a little spritz of childhood trauma in there, it becomes like, I need it all of the time. This is what I've been missing. This, this is like, people describe it as the hug from the mother they never had. Like, it's just the most you. I don't know. It, it, to me, it's hard it, because you get so out of reality that you, um, I don't know. I feel weird talking about my own addiction, but like my drug of choice was, is, uh, weed and benzodiazepines. Um, and I'm on, the, I'm on the fence because when I was in rehab, they were like, no girl, weed is a valid addiction. Okay, girl. It's, it's, it's equally as bad as H addiction. Okay. Because it's a silent killer. Okay. Why am I talking about weed addiction? Because, um, yeah, it's kind of like the same way for that. It's like, w you can give any person cannabis but the second they got a little spritz of trauma in there and it reacts with their brain positively you're it's it's too late um well it's not too late obviously there <laughs> although although there's weird statistics on this so i have to um wait 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 this is good what percentage of addicts have trauma Two thirds of addicts have personally experienced some physical or why, why S E X U A L? Why? Just in general, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say. Wait, two thirds have experienced physical? What about emotional? Is that three thirds or what? <laughs> Anyways, that wasn't what I was gonna look up. I just saw that and it looked cool. Okay, what percentage of addicts have recover? 70. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, 
I ref- I don't think that's true. This thing is saying this is ridiculous. There's so many different statistics here. Anyways, so when I was in rehab, I learned that like one in 10 addicts recover, but now I'm on Google and it says that 75% recover. Mm, I'm show. Honestly, I hope that's the case. I hope that's the case. Um, okay. What do you guys think? How copyrighted is this film? <laughs> on a scale of, on a scale of, um, I am we to Sybil. <laughs> Um, hey, hence atypical anorexia becoming more and more common. Sometimes eating less doesn't help if your endocrine system is out of whack. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I was saying like, okay, like, yeah, like binge or what, what are we talking about? Food addiction is more likely with, um, trauma, but also like other food addictions, if you know what I'm saying. Thank you for talking about recovery stats with me because I'm giving a probably an insane amount of misinformation when it comes to stats in this moment. I, I'm telling you. Recovery stats are very hard to view because it depends on where the laws that are in place and what treatment is used. Oh, for real, for real? One in 10 is accurate for the 12 steps. You. Eric, you're kidding me. Oh my God. There is hope. There is hope. Okay, because in order to do the 12 step, you got to be ready to find God. And okay, ready? I want to find... Okay, I'll stop. I didn't give a trigger warning for that. (laughs) But (laughs) because uh, it can be actually extremely upsetting for some people to talk about. Completely understandable. Um, Just below Sybil. I don't like that. Never wonder. Because Sybil is gone. Sybil, it ceased. She's in the, uh, she's in the YouTube took her down because uh, I was blocked in all state, in all countries. Wait, what's up? Not for me. Alcohol boring. I'm allowed Ben's. Not Bob, your experience is, thank you so much for sharing. Um, they're very important. <laughs> I'm allowed benzos, but it's it's for physical symptoms, and I have to take that. But I smoke and vape, and I feel like there's a bond between you and the chemical. Absolutely. And I will, like, say that for a lot of people with trauma, they won't like the t- they won't like the feeling of alcohol. They won't like the feeling of weed. Like, that, it's different for every single person. Thank you for helping me to reiterate that. Um, this is why I hate 12 step, um, and am more safe, uh, more into safe access and harm reduction. Eric, I don't know any other programs. I am, (laughs) I need to look into this though. This is amazing because I'm a beyond, like, if 12 steps worked for you, first of all, you're a beautiful human being. Like, if you have done your 12 steps, I, I know that, like, you say, you, you're you probably going to say that it's, like, the higher power. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't put words into people's mouths. Usually people don't like that. <laughs> but also, nah. Like, it was also you, though. Um, perseverance. There's a bunch of big actor actors' names in it that we think it... Uh, Could be hopefully wrong, though, because like I'm just trying to decide whether we should do what we did with I am we and just pause it a lot so that we can like continue talking about it or if we should just talk about it a lot and then at the end watch it so that if it gets cut out, then it won't be a huge deal. I'm kind of trying to think that through. I'm really thinking that through. Uh, former alcoholics and drug abusers often report that they don't miss the substances nearly as much as the conditions under which they were used. What? Wait, I don't second that. Um, the movie was based on the novel by Irving Welsh, um, about a crowd of heroin addicts that run together in Edinburgh. The story is narrated by Renton... I can't. Hold on. 
Ewan. Ewan. Oh my god, I'm ridiculous. Why did I say E1? Ridiculous. Ewan McGregor. <laughs> who will and does dive into the filthiest toilet in Scotland in search of mislaid drugs. I'm not going to say that that would be inaccurate. He introduces us to his friends, including, yeah, we, amazing friends, love them. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. These friends sleep where they can in bars and squats out of the bed and meet girls at dance club. They have assorted girlfriends and there is even a baby in the movie that thank you. I'm glad I'm read this because also trigger warning for not only drug use, but drug use in front of a baby. Um, so just add a little bit more of a triggering aspect that, to that. Um, but they are not settled in any way and no place is home. Uh, okay, let's just watch it. I can't. Because there's so many good parts. <laughs> but it, it ugh, I don't know. Okay, wait. Ugh, I feel awkward. I feel weird. I'm nervous. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, you guys, I'll be back if I get taken down. I'll be back. I chose something else. And the reasons? There are more reasons. Who needs reasons when you've got head on? Mm. Yeah, something called love. Well, that's hop hypnotizing like chicken. That's like hypnot. Yeah, so I don't know. This is kind of just the beginning of the movie. I thought that it would. Ugh, wait a second. Pass. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that one bit. Mm mm. So, anyways, basically, this is fam living together. Okay. Just. Well, Valium takes I'm ready. But who is? What is what is happening right now? I'm terrified. I don't want. Bottle of Valium, which I've already procured from my mother, who is in her own domestic and television. One for feces and one. Wait. Sorry, you guys. For this, you will need. So you guys, I'm going to be honest, I watched the beginning of this movie without subtitles <laughs> because I know. Okay, does anybody struggle to understand? Yeah, not Bob. I did a I did a very bad job actually. Disgusting job of of showing that it's very it's an amazing movie however y'all i struggled to understand their accents and i'm wondering it, 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 does anyone struggle to understand my accent ever <laughs> my chicago accent also can you tell that i have a chicago accent like i think that someone from not chicago in america would say chicago i'm from chicago or no michelle's from chicago but I say she can't. <laughs> He's getting ready to detox, Bob. I pre not Bob. I pre not Bob. I appreciate that. Um, and honestly, he he ends up boarding up his walls. He gets all this nutritious food. Okay, soup is nutritious. Don't get out of here. I know there's a lot of salt in it. For this you will need one room which you will not leave. Soothing music. Tomato soup, ten tins of. Tomatoes! Mushroom soup, eight tins of. You guys, my fam is from, my dad's side of the family is from England, but, all right, there, my grand, granddad's side is from Scotland, but he also is from England, but like. Consumption cold. Ice cream, vanilla, one large tub of. Magnesia, milk of, one bottle. Paracetamol, mouthwash, vitamin. Okay. Um, so, yeah, he's preparing for all of the withdrawals. He's like, nah, I'm not going to leave because I'll have to. And I'm sh Y'all in addiction y that w have been in recovery, y'all know exactly what the fuck it's like to be like, mm, I'm going to like. I'm going to do this thing before I decide to relapse. And so then I won't relapse because, like, there's wood literally in the on the door so thank you for sending me hearts and for uh, being here and that's beautiful um 
John is actually a different dialect, so it won't be hard on yourself for not understanding them. Thank you, Eric. Because I felt bad. I was like, I was like, okay, is it just me? You guys are, or where from Scotland are these people from? Because their accents are so strong. I love it though. I have to say, I can't talk too much about how much I love it because it'll be weird. <laughs> um, I can because I'm moving near Chicago, but the country... Yeah, no, I don't live in Chicago. <laughs> One time I kind of told you guys where I live. I'm not going to do that now. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you guys. <laughs> um, no, lol. I watched this with, with a Swedish dude. He asked for subtitles too. It's beautiful though. Like you have to appreciate the accent. At the same time, at some points I was like, I was like, how are we speaking the same language? It was, it, it's, it's amazing and beautiful and much more aesthetically pleasing than my Chicago accent. Um, wait, French Canadian. So sounds stupid even saying Illinois, let alone, let alone Chicago. Um, Chi town, UK cultural disputes are complex. He lived in England, but you know, still a Scot. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying, y'all. That's all I'm saying. Wait, wait, wait. Play it in 30-second interviews, intervals, and it won't get copyrighted. Is that what happened to Sybil? We have to do Sybil again. No, we don't. Mineral water. Lucas said. Pornography. One mattress. One bucket for urine. One for feces. And one for vomitus. Okay, just wait. One television and one bottle of Valium, which I've already procured from my mother, who is, in her own domestic and socially acceptable way, also a drug addict. See, now that's kind of why I put that part in there, was because I thought it was kind of interesting and funny how, not, actually not funny at all, how, um, yeah, there are certain types of addictions that are normalized, um... We're getting better at it as a society, I feel. Um, however, like, if someone is addicted to H, it's like, nah, fam, you have this category. But if you're addicted to, you know, Valium, it's like, well, you know, you were prescribed it by your doctor. I don't know, though. Like I said, talk to yo doctors before you ever consider ta taking my advice. You know what I mean? <laughs> because, like, if, if you are on Valium, iconic, I'm not, t I'm beautiful. Please don't do anything to your prescription based on my opinion. <laughs> Obviously. Now I'm ready. All I need is one final hit. <laughs> Could it relate more? Could it not relate more? It's so good. Like, it's all like, bro, you know what? If I just had one last hit of DOC, mm, then I would be good to be sober for the rest of my life. Move the pain. Well, Valium takes effect. And you genuinely believe it because one of the big parts of addiction is when you, I'm sorry if it's annoying how often I pause. I was re-watching re I Am We live stream last week and I was like pausing during the most interesting parts. It was so annoying. <laughs> Am I doing that again? Ew. But, oh no, I was saying something good though. Oh no. No. All I need is one final hit to soothe the pain. Oh yeah, how in addiction you literally lie to yourself. Like you're and that's the scariest part is that you feel like you can't even trust yourself because you know yourself best. I feel like I'm at a freaking like AA meeting. Um you know yourself best, right? So you know how to manipulate yourself into believing certain it's just ridiculous. It's it's a emotional roller coaster and you know in right now in this movie I'm show he's like no for real though I actually only want one more hit. And anyone who doesn't struggle with addiction you're like are you fucking kidding me? You're like why do you need one more hit? That's the stupidest no. But well Valium takes effect. Like you'll go through emotional gymnastics. Okay, Eric got the vibe. He knew that I, I pause a lot not to be annoying, but for um, copyright and also commentary. <laughs> Look, uh, London, could you help me out? <laughs> this was typical of Mikey Forrester. Wait. What the fuck are these? Just so you guys know, we're not watching the poo scenes. 
Under the normal run of things, I would have nothing to do with a cunt, but this was not the normal run of things. Open suppositories. Ideal for your purposes. Nah. Slow That's not what he wanted. Bring you down gradually. Mm -mm. Custom fucking design for your needs. I want a fucking hit. So I've got me a Take a leave it. Wait. Oh my god, sorry, I, I missed a bunch of valuable comments. Glasgow, which at the time was really poor area, but is now getting fancy? I have to write that down. I would like to visit. Guys, where, where in Scotland should I visit? I've never been to Scotland. I've been to, I've been to England twice, and it, oh, I can't even talk about how much I love it there because I would just be offending people. Um, never touched it here, but it, it's meth. Valium? Oh god, now you guys know how much I don't know about DRU drugs. Why am I even pretending that this isn't gonna be copyrighted? Like, that's a joke. Um, here for your commentary, we can watch it anytime. Honestly not, Bob, that's what I'm trying to say. Cause like, I... <laughs> The only, I say that because I got like one comment before saying, bitch, stop fucking um, pausing so much. I'm trying to watch the damn movie. I'm like, I mean, but you could always like watch it on your own and it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> oh no, copyright it. Oh well. Are you feeling better now though, eh? Oh, aye, for all the good they've done me, I might as well have stuck them up my ass. Heroin makes you constipated. The heroin from my last hit is fading away and the suppositories have yet to melt. I don't know if they said, I think they said it in this movie, but they said, like, I think we'll get to it. They said, um, when you're an H addict or an addict, the only thing that matters is getting your next hit, which kind of made it sound easy. Actually, no, being an addict is extremely difficult because you, like they, these people, as you can see, jump through these insane illegal hoops to get their drug of choice. Um, whatever. I'm no longer constipated. So what's this? He's getting high off that thing? We're not watching the poo scene. Pristine convenience. Brilliant gold taps. Virginal white. I'm scared that this isn't this isn't interest this isn't what even is this? Marble. A seat carved from ebony, a cistern full of Chanel number five, and a flunky. Handing me pieces of raw no, 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 no. I refuse. All right. So then I <laughs> the next part that I thought, I mean, honestly, you guys, the the parts that I'm talking about are addiction related. Ob obvi. Um, I don't know about Scotland, but if you can go to Ireland, go to Free Dairy Museum. <laughs> I would love to go to Ireland. Oh my god, no, I gotta go to all of them. Actually, all of Europe. What happened with Brexit? Like, what was that? <laughs> Wait, this is worse than the toilet scene! We're not watching the baby scene. Oh my god, dude, I literally would rather- You guys, this is- this is- why, why am I like this? I'm like, okay, you guys, I'm not going to show you the poo scene, but I am going to show you, okay, this scene. And if you can see what's on the screen right now, even though the screen is so itty bitty, probably. Uh, having had someone close to us be an H addict, we can say yes. Seems like nothing matters uh, more than the next score. It was nothing they weren't willing to do. To There was nothing they were... They weren't willing to do to get it, and it didn't matter who they hurt. Absolutely, that's why, like, I don't want to, um, give, I don't want to say, like, oh my god, like, it's totally fine, though, because you're an addict. Absolutely not. That is not an, an excuse at all. In fact, I, 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 I've appreciated, though, how in the movie, like, the judge had empathy towards them. I was shocked. I was like, what? Like, 
I didn't, is this a thing? Like in the court of law, they're like, oh my God, I feel so bad. They have, they're an addict. Like, no, I feel like in the court of law, usually they're like, bro, first of all, fuck you. That's not an excuse. Um, yeah, but like to be on the receiving end or to be in an addict's life, again, it can be just traumatic, ter- like, it's just exhausting, um, yeah, it's, play Edinburgh, okay, wait, so not Bob is saying that this is a disturbing scene, what, why did I think this scene was so important, there's a baby here, and then, oh yeah, this is why, wait, why though, why though, I really do insist on, I really do, why Monshell? No, Monshell, we're not watching this. He's literally like. Okay, I think that I thought that it was like important to show like one part of that scene. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you why. Maybe it's just it's like. Going through the years. Whatever. Like heroin. I mean, that's what counts, right? Personality. I mean, that's what keeps a relationship going through the years. Like heroin. I mean. Yeah, I, I'm sure a lot of addicts can agree. You don't. You don't even believe you have a personality outside of your addiction, and so your drug of choice that is your personality. Um, we are watching train exploiting, but also trigger warning for like babies being there while people do hair like H. It's extremely disturbing, sad, and um. I need, I I would love an explanation about the end, honestly. I was tripping. I was like, wait a second. Like, how is this the end? (laughs) Um, yeah, the sick boy has a silly rant. Um, I can only be around people with a act- I can only be around people with active addiction, honestly, because of my past work and extensive- training it saddens me that there isn't better care for addicts loved ones absolutely like you know that oh my god like you have al-anon which which is great for a lot of people um but absolutely like i don't want to say that if i have empathy for an addict that i don't have empathy for the uh in the same way that like if somebody has a disorder and they do these bad things to other people and they say well it's because i have x disorder no that's not how it works that is not an excuse it can be an explanation but that doesn't make it okay like please no i think that i i hope i've made that clear enough i hope we on the same page fam um there's a sequel should i watch the sequel we, we go live halfway through the week Heroin's got great fucking personality. Why am I watching this? You guys, I feel like I'm exposed. No, 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 no! no! <laughs> so nasty. Oh my god. Has anyone ever watched, um,. Intervention, so good. It's so good. But, like, I made a point of not watching any of the um, ones about, like, anything you inject. Because why do they film it? That's just wrong. Don't mind me if I sound like I'm farting, you guys. I'm not. My chair just creaks. Or am I? So, anyway. um, We're getting to... educational parts i swear i mean i guess this is educational in sort of a disturbing way we stole prescriptions or bought them sold them oh yeah because he was talking about how i you guys in the addiction world i have no idea anything about this like to be honest um swap them forged them photocopied them or traded like do people do this? I'm, I mean, obviously they do, but it's like at the- Drugs with cancer victims, alcoholics, old age pensioners, AIDS patients, epileptics, and bored housewives. 
We took morphine, diamorphine, cyclazine, codeine, tamazepam, nitrazepam, phenobarbital, and so The on. Pams, y'all. It's all the Pams. Every single episode. Love that show. Yeah, and then, like, at the end, you're like, oh, my God, you have to find if they, find out if they uh, recover, went through recovery. Also, yeah, like, oh, my gosh. I think this movie did a great, a great job of explaining, like, a lot of people think that once you go through recovery, like, once you go to rehab, it's like, okay, bitch, now you should stay sober for the rest of your life. Um, which is definitely the goal, like, for a lot of people, for myself, like, that would be amazing and iconic. Um, but nobody really talks about, I mean, I guess they do. I mean, we definitely did when I was in rehab, like, how... It, relapse is a normal part of recovery it's not it, it's not needed but like when i heard that i was like well does that that means that i'm never gonna relapse then because like i'm so strong um no when you 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 what what usually when my relapse happened it was when i felt because when i was in rehab i was happy i was around other people you get home and the second you f you get triggered you feel s some weird thing it's like it's all downhill from there Amatel, dextropapoxithine, methadone, nalbethine, pethidine, pentazine, dextromoramide, clomethizol. The streets. No, please. Wait, I think that I uh, got the part where they're not doing drugs. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that was the baby scene. That was the baby scene. Anyways, the reason I thought that this scene was. That we're not watching the baby scene. Um, but after this scene, I thought that it, this is the mother um, who her I don't know what happened to her baby, but we're not talking about it. Very bad thing. And in this moment, I was like tripping, no pun intended, because why did he take a hit before her? Like, baby, like, okay, first of all, I don't know, but I think it was interesting, though, how he was like, this is my form of communication. Like, I don't know how to console you, um, but I can offer you H, which will make everything better. And so she did. Don't do drugs, please. I could understand that, to take the pain away. So I cooked up and she got it. I appreciate you guys for telling me which scenes you do and don't like. Like, if I ever pick up a scene and you're like, girl, this is actually like about to be not great. Let me know. Just let me know. Only after me. That went without saying. Well, at least we knew. Like, I wasn't really understanding what he was saying. I could be wrong. But why is he taking a hit before her? Who the father was now. It wasn't just the baby that died that day. Oh, shit. Well, there, there, there goes that. It was lost and never returned. It seemed he had no theory with which to explain a moment like this. Nor did I. Our only response was to keep on going and fuck everything. Oh! Um, thanks not, Bob, for explaining this in terms that I can understand. Um, it's like going to light the, sp the spliff and pass. Misery. It's like when you, when you uh, pass the blunt, misery. but with H. Put it up in a spoon and dissolve it with a drop of bile. Then squat it into a stick Hold on, one second. vein and do it all over again. Keep on going, getting up, going out. So basically, after this extremely traumatic thing happened to them, they were like, okay, like, we need to continue our, our lifestyle in order to continue scoring. Bobbing, stealing, fucking people over, propelling ourselves. With this is awkward. Um, H, you, s thank you guys for saying H, because... I know that YouTube is okay with the F word. If it's if it's under, like, enough... Like, you can't say it more than, like, five times. It's fine, though. Like, this video is already going to be demonetized. Like, you, can say, you can't say the C word, okay? And you can't say the H word, I'm sure. I can imagine that that would be a problem for YouTube for some reason. Um, H use and dissociative issues go hand in hand... No, 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 we're reading. Go hand in hand often... It, it also triggers similar chemicals in the brain as romance. Eric, be for real. So in his mind, this genuinely would have been the best way he thinks that can help her, sadly. Yeah, like as an addict, I mean, I hate, I hate that term. 
Um, I don't want to talk about my personal experiences right now. I don't know why, you guys. I feel... I probably will, though. It's probably fun. Uh, but, yeah, I could, I could not relate more, you know, to being like, oh, you're sad? Well, here's my drug of choice. Wouldn't they, like, bitch, no. Like, that's... But, like, you know how some people's love language is buying things? Some people's is physical effect? Mm. Mm. We agree. Life is going to always present you with obstacles, and if we fail or act responsibly, then it's more important to be aware of our mistakes and actions than correct uh, mistakes and take action to correct um, it then beat ourselves up for human being. Yeah, absolutely. That, I appreciate that one. Um, you know, because it's not your fault that you are an addict, right? Not you, never wonder. <laughs> Just like the void, everyone, ever, all of you. No. Um, you know what I mean though? Like it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility to handle it. Just like it's not your fault that, you know, a lot of a lot of people go through trauma and, you know, maybe they live their entire childhood man- being manipulated by their parents, by the, everyone in their life. Um, and then they end up manipulating other people. It's not an excuse. Um because you should be, you should, once you know that you need help, once you realize, there's no excuses. That it would all go wrong. Because no matter how much you stash, mm. how much you steal, you never have enough. No matter how often you go out and rob and fuck people over, you always need to get up and do it all over again. Wanka! Oh my god, my, my dad is British. And so one time I was like, at nine years old, I was like to my dad, hey dad, wh- or why am I pretending I'm British? What's a wanker? And he was like, Michelle, never say that again. <laughs> if you don't like addict, don't use. Substance abuse is, if you don't like addict, don't use it. Oh my God, I thought you were saying if you don't like being an addict, then don't use. I was like, Eric. <laughs> I was like, I, I didn't know you felt this way. Um, substance abuse is the clim- clinical term now anyway. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, yeah, I appreciate that. Substance use and abuse. Mm. Yeah, and also there's a big difference between substance use and abuse like i like if you can drink alcohol or smoke bud like once a week and be totally fine i'm not like okay you know what i mean good that's great you know but when it when it becomes a problem is when it's not great um not that you should ever because it's bad for your liver so um i think you can say wanker lol because This video has been shut down (laughs) because Michelle said the W word. You you can say that, wanker. Y'all, my phone notifications linked up to my, um, wait. Phone, like on my computer, and it's the coolest shit. Sooner or later, this kind of thing is bound to happen. See, this is tripping me. Like, maybe it's just because I, I'm so used to the um, Americanized movies that are so blatant and tell you everything that's happening. <laughs> because shoplifting is theft, which is a crime. And- See, this is the part I was tripping about. Why, like, they were being all empathetic. Like, first of all, I think that... I don't know my opinion, honestly. Like, I, I, uh, I think that they should be more empathetic towards addicts in the court of law. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. I'm about 50-50. Despite what you may believe, there is no such entity as victimless crime. Heroin addiction may explain your actions, but it does not excuse them. Mr. Murphy, you are... A- that's, my, that's my number one uh, catchphrase, you guys. It's not an ex- excuse. It's an explanation. A habitual thief devoid of regret and remorse. And sentencing you to six months imprisonment, my only worry is that it will not be long before we meet again. Mr. Renton, I understand that you have entered- Why is he wearing that thing on his head? Why does he look like me? Why do we have the same haircut? <laughs> um, 
for some people, recovery is stable and that's medically managed safe, safely, but not cold turkey. Many thrive and have normal lives in that um, normal lives in that kind of care. Okay, abs- that's lit though. Um, Escaping the Madhouse, a Nelly B. L. Y. story. It's a true story of a journalist almost being killed in a bad asylum. Exposed the horrible mental health care. Good movie. I got you. I got you. Hold up. Hold up. So now here's what I have on my notes list. Glasgow Free Dairy Museum Tour. Um... Okay, you guys, <laughs> I, I just, I feel so bad if I ever miss anyone's movies because um, I don't, I genuinely don't want to. ...into a program of rehabilitation in an attempt to wean yourself away from heroin. The suspension of your sentence is conditional on your continued cooperation with this program. Should you stand guilty before me again, I shall not hesitate. To- All right, so he got out. He was like, okay, so... I'm off the hook now, and I, all I have to do is be, like, sober, okay, and it's going to be all good, right? And then... Like a layer of frost. I need to visit the Mother Superior for one hit. One fucking hit. So basically, fam had a hard day. To get us over this long, hard day. What's on the menu this evening, sir? Your favorite dish? It's sad. I feel bad. This is terrible. But it's the reality. It's like, and like, if you've ever, if you've ever been in an addiction or you know someone who's been in an addiction, when they, when they relapse, it's, um, it's just the worst thing that could, it's terrible. And it, you know, it's terrible for the addict as well. Like, it's not fun for anyone. Usual table, sir? All right, thank you. Uh, would Sir care to pay for his bill in advance? No, stick it on my tab. I regret to inform, sir. Credit limit was reached in Breach quite some time ago. Okay, he doesn't have, like, money. Um, I'm pro decriminalization except GHB. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that because... I, I kind of want to read the room with this kind of stuff because I, I don't know. Like, I would love opinions to help me persuade my own opinion. Um, still just as hard today, though, to deal with the cravings when those parts are as present, are present as they are still mentally stuck in uh, that time. One of many things we work on in therapy. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's... i I can't even put it into words i don't even know it's just it's just um i i saw a statistic one time that said like an addict craves their drug of choice this statistic is gonna be wrong but it's gonna be around what i think i remember i hate my life why am i like this um an addict craves their drug of choice more than a person who is craving water after three days of no drinking water. In that case, <sighs> and so you just have to deal with that constantly. And I mean, people say it goes down, but like, you know, I, I hear abundantly people saying like, it never, like it does, the craving comes back and goes away, but it never really does. Do I mean, maybe for a lot of people it does. I hope it does. It was sort of care for a starter, some garlic bread, perhaps. No, 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 ew, ew, ew. I don't even want to see this shit. No, 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 ah! Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That was disturbing. I should have known because I put, I put, I wanted to watch minute 45 and then I put, I wanted to watch minute 40. 652. So that means that I had a very distinct split there for some specific reason, and that is because they were injecting H in that scene. Love that. Why is my channel still up? I think that's the question. I think that's the real question. Like, I don't even know how many copyright strikes I have, because how do you even know that stuff? Like, do you get emails? (laughs) 
Um, the troops coming in, coming in clutch. <laughs> uh, oh my god, no, that's awful. So it's like probably get this wrong to roofies. Oh yeah, you guys are talking about GHB. Yes, uh, we're talking. We're still talking about it. Go off. Go off. <laughs> Ben, wait, what's ben Benzo's? Benzo's is my favorite addiction topic for some weird reason. Why am I watching this? So this is this is Fam and his highness. Perhaps I would like me to go for a taxi. I'm I'm sorry if this is triggering for anyone. Like I say this in every stream. But this one as well, obviously, if 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 you're upset by this or feel like triggered at all, like you can you don't have to you can like see yourself out if you feel the need to. I know that you still care about me and I know that it's not personal. And yeah, that's that. You know what I mean? Like, I feel that, you know what I mean? Because your mental health is way more important than a random live on YouTube. copyright uh what do we got here so what is why why is he doing this to him i guess this is just like a representation of i don't know why i'm showing this i'm sorry hold on what is this at 47 minutes what about 48 minutes i thought something was interesting at 48 minutes yeah i guess it was really no this is just not good I mean, I guess I just wanted to show how terrible freaking I don't know. It was weird the way he was handling. Like, why is he handling them? Like, why is he doing that? That's terrible. All right, go off. Oh, he dropped him off at the hospital? Wait, be for real, Eric. I didn't even know that. Clonopin and Xanax, ketamine as well, that fall into dissociative classes of drugs. Hey. I think, yeah. Yeah, a lot of, uh, you know, psychiatrists will not prescribe benzos anymore because they very addictive. However, a lot of them still do. And if you are prescribed benzos, iconic, I'm not taught, like, <laughs> just because I struggle with it does not mean you will. But also how? Um, okay, so I just wanted to watch the part where his, his parents pick him up. No, 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 no. Okay, so they woke him up, and then his parents are being all, like, empathetic towards him, which, in my personal experience, I don't know why they're carrying him, is very relatable. Like, he, like the parents will get mad, but then they'll be, like, all loving. And from my, what I learned in my experiences is that um, showing love to an a to a person who struggles with substance abuse is extremely important um but also i can understand the other side which is like fam this is not great we're not trying to enable this it's a hard line that i don't know exactly oh they locking him in they as they should sure i don't feel the sickness yet it's in the post that's for sure mm. i'm in the junkie limbo at the moment i'm sorry diddly darn tang I, every week i say this but i i say i just genuinely want to be stable i just want to be stable for y'all but i can't i said i was gonna go live at 1 p.m then i said 4 p.m i'm so sorry that was my bad this is this is <laughs> 
tool to sleep. Okay, this is hard to stay awake. So when I was going through withdrawals from benzos, um it was not like this at all, but also H is very different from that and so completely understandable. However, um kind of relatable. I guess I don't know, for me withdrawals were like obviously insane anxiety like all day not like all day I thought I was gonna have a heart attack because I was having so much constant anxiety that I thought that I was constantly having a panic attack oh my god it was just so but like obviously that's just my example of how um withdrawals from different drugs are different so oh my god what That's crazy. Oh my god, happy 10 months, diddly darn dang. But seriously, I didn't even know I've had memberships for that long. But you you were like one of my very first members. So that's amazing and also crazy. Thank you very much. The sickness is on its way. Sweat, chills, nausea, Ugh. pain and craving. Who is surprised that this stream wasn't taken down yet? That's crazy. Need like nothing else I've ever known will soon take hold of me. It's on its way. They took me off Ativan when I was in the hospital one time and went on withdrawal so bad they had to give me I don't even know how to pronounce that. Librium. Um, librium. Wait. Librium. I'm ridiculous. I it. <laughs> it must be so frustrating to watch me live. Um, yeah, but absolutely. A lot of times they will take you off it and be like, "Yeah, sorry, we're just not allowed having that here," and it's like. <laughs> okay, bitch, I guess I just won't have them. Oh, yes, us too. When we were on cannabis constantly, thought we were going to have a heart attack and not wake up in the morning. Ooh. That's terrible. I, I appreciate that, though, because, like, I'm sure that there's, like, two different opinions here. One is that, like, cannabis addiction is equal to any other addiction, one person, one of the people who come in and talk to you in rehab, he said that cannabis is the worst addiction because... <laughs> that sounds so stupid. No, but seriously, because, like, like um, there's no warning signs. So, um, you, it just, pe it just, like a vampire bat, just sucks away at your life slowly. Whereas with... Other things, there's warning signs to get help, but also then there's the other side where it's like, bitch, are you kidding me? Like cannabis addiction ver or cannabis subs uh, substance abuse versus H. Mm. Yeah. We had, we react very bad with Xan, only use it in extreme circumstances because it makes us dissociate so badly and the next day we are achy and groggy. Yeah, absolutely, fam. All I'm saying is that abundantly, not every person, obviously, but abundantly, y'all, people with dissociative disorders tend to do good on cannabis. Like, it helps them a lot with, like, communication, uh, or if you have DID communication, but in dissociation, just in general. Uh, but then there's benzos that don't do well. They make it like they make it worse. I, the brain is so it is so interesting. <gasps> you were on it for ten years, and they just took you off of it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people they will genuinely start. Their heart will start beating so fast that you have to watch them to make sure that they don't have a heart attack it, it's just mine apparently was just anxiety because they would take my pulse and it would be like normal weed and age addictions are equal in very different ways i appreciate your saying that because i was like i don't know like i don't know if i can like read the room on this i feel like i feel like kind of weird saying that cannabis but like thank you for validating that 
Uh, all drugs have pros and cons. It's person to person. It's very complex, but interesting, TBH. Yeah. Um, I refuse to go on Xan because I, rem I saw how it badly it affected people. Yeah, I... I'm not, I'm, I'm not a doctor. Xanax can work great for some people, terrible for other people, you know. Our primary, uh, our primary encouraged the cannabis, and now we've been on medical patient for seven years-ish now? Iconic. When was cannabis legalized in, like, Colorado? Remember how they made, like, a South Park episode? That must have been, like, 2000s. But in Illinois... They just legalized, but like then it, I, it's always been legalized for medical. Uh, why are we talking about that? Why does America uh, prescribe Valium and Xan when lorazepam and clonazepam are weaker? I don't know. I was prescribed clonazepam and clonopin, but probably because not Bob. It's all or nothing with America. <laughs> <I'll be. laughs> oh yeah, this is this. We're done with this part. Okay, so I also wanted to show you guys 57 for some reason. I'm alive, 35. Lots of tricks, 66. Wounded fit. Boredom. But not me. And right in the middle of an epidemic. Oh, yeah, I appreciate this. This guy's talking about how, oh, I'm sober. I'm in the middle of an H epidemic, and I am one of the, f the people who is able to continue living and get out of this uh, substance abuse disorder. Uh, and I think that the way he describes how he should be feeling amazing and lucky but feels empty is very accurate. Seems, however, I really am the luckiest. 2012! That's amazing. I was like 12. In the world, several years of addiction right in the middle of an epidemic, surrounded by the living dead. All I'm going to say about cannabis, y'all, is that why are people so like weird about cannabis, but then they okay with alcohol? That's all. That's all I'm saying. Um, ours is fine with ours is fine with doing shrooms at times because it helps us communicate and stabilize so goddamn much. That's crazy. Like, why? The brain is... It's so interesting, like, because it must be because of some specific thing that that drug part of your brain, that drug touches. And now you guys know why I'm debating I, why I should not get my master's, because I don't think I can do that. Uh, some states have been legalized, legalized shrooms for medical uses only. Or also, yeah, I was like, I was like, so you, you can just buy that off, like, where are you guys getting... <laughs> I'll stop. Um, the survival guilt with recovering and recovered people is so real, man. It's thank you, thank you for sharing that, Eric. It's very sad. Um, yeah, because like people, you, a lot of people will describe how maybe the addiction won't kill you. For example, cannabis addiction. It's not like it's not like you can die straight away from a cannabis overdose, but it's like you're dead already. Um, <laughs> I thought you said that okay you said animals even do drugs in the wild sometimes it's wild I thought you said that's valid and I was like that is valid animals should go off and as they should yeah I heard about that like some animals know that certain substance like some plants will make them feel a certain way and they're like I there's also ketamine therapy in some places um yeah I've heard about that. I don't, I didn't even, I don't even know anything about that, to be honest. Amsterdam legalized, of course Amsterdam did, as they should. Amsterdam always coming in clutch. Legalized truffle, I don't know what that is. I thought that was a chocolate, but had to keep the tops under the counter because tourists kept getting high and failing the canal and falling in the canals? That is a story that I did not know. I appreciate that. Sometimes getting sober feels like you've lost almost a whole aspect of a relationship with people you used to have. Yeah, when I was in rehab, let me know y'all's thoughts on this. They told me literally delete everyone in your contacts. You need to stop being friends with them because they will enable your bad habits. You need to stop, start a whole new life. Um, 
I've read on Good Health that testing that testing tuna helps reduce cr- drug cravings. Okay, should I be should I be eating more tuna? Uh, true or false? Heck, Willie Nelson is darn near a hundred and does weed and is still singing and healthy as heck. Proof: It is good. Even Morgan Freeman is a weed man. Yeah, absolutely. I'm also pro cannabis. You know, because here's my problem: is that I like cannabis too much. Okay, I never have, and you know, I'm sure like a lot of people with like alcohol addiction, for example, you're like, no, 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 like. I, j- I, j- I don't hate alcohol. I just like it too much, bitch. Um, I hope that's kind of what you were getting at. <laughs> I don't know. Me. I'm negative. Just so you guys know, after this clip, I don't have any other clips that I felt were important to watch. So we're probably just going to talk about it. It's official. And once the pain goes away, that's when the real battle starts. Depression. Boredom. You feel so fucking low, you'll want to fucking top yourself. Tommy! Tommy! Um, also, I'm sorry for not, like, asking you guys first what... I w- okay, I was thinking, y'all, for next week's movie, we're going to... I'm gonna make it so that only... I feel so bad. So that only members can vote. Because you guys deserve that. You got You guys deserve that, right? Like, come on. But also, we're probably gonna end up watching pretty much all of the movies and obviously please continue recommending movies but anyways I wanted to um watch this one though because I really wanted to watch an addiction movie but I didn't want to like just throw my own ones in there I was like let's just watch this one because I got like two people recommending it what what is this no I think we're done Sorry, you guys. This is, like, plotline, not addiction-related. Um. <laughs> not nah, Bob. Y'all be teaching me something every day. Um. We don't know... We... We don't know much behind the research of effectiveness of any of these, but have heard of the programs. Would be interesting to find out. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting because, like, also brains react different. Oh, you guys saw how I'm watching this movie. That's embarrassing. Sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, government. Uh... Yeah, that didn't work. I'm recovered and prefer having my friends still. I appreciate that, Eric, because it's like, well, yeah, I mean, definitely, like, maybe block your drug dealer for sure. I would recommend that. Um, Tommy seems the worst because it's his fault. Oh, no, I missed an important aspect. Oh, no. When is that at, though? What is everyone's thoughts on Black Snake Moan for a mental health vid? Uh, There are some naughty scenes, but lots of relate to in the anxiety intimacy issue. Yeah, uh, thank you for sharing that because it's like, first of all, let me write that down. But second of all, um... I, what I've learned through all of these, um, mental health movies is that abundantly, y'all, uh, they tend to be very graphic and can be unbelievably triggering, but actually once you, you kind of realize you're like, oh yeah, that actually makes sense as to why that is. Um, but let me see here. My English teacher often talks about movie interpretations, uh, and so I watch Trainsploiting, um, and there are spoilers in what I'm going to be reading off of Reddit right now. 
I would say the movie is nothing but a coming of age film where Mark Renton goes from being a kid to an adult and it follows a typical structure. The hero falls, the hero's journey, plus obstacles, the tests, no more flaw. Here, we can read this together as a fam. Um, flaw equals heroin addict. This is interesting. This is like a story structure outline. Obstacles equals temptation. Um, bro- Brought by staying with a junkie group of friends. Uh, journey from Edinburgh to Edinburgh to London. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Test the theft and escape. And then ending is that they're no longer a drug addict. Love that. Oh, there's a squirrel. I love squirrels. Basically, age abuse, age abuse and abstinence would symbolize adolescence. What? Oh, my God. Renton needs to fulfill his... S-E-X-U-A-L needs and opposes his parents. In the group of friends, Mark Renton and Francis are the only ones whose names are being used in the movie. Uh, The others are all nicknames. This might be because Begbie doesn't consume H. See? Renton eventually stops consuming it and manages to grow up unlike the rest of his friends who instead keep their nicknames. <gasps> That's crazy. Like, why? Like, writers literally think of anything. The typical teenage revelation slash epiphany is brought by the dead, uh, by the death of baby Dawn. Yes, I was going to try to leave that part in and I literally exposed you guys to it. I'm terrible. I'm so sorry. Um, Brenton realizes the seriousness of his addiction. This partly starts Renton's new life. Uh, Dawn's name invokes the beginning of something. Oh my god, I never even thought about that. See? Then Tommy, uh, then Tommy represents Renton, uh, if he hadn't stopped being a heroin addict. Thomas, meaning twin, means twin as if he were some kind of substitute for Renton. Then um, it is him who kills Tommy indirectly. He still he steals the videotape and lends it and lends him the money for a shot. Tommy dies and so oh, and so never manages to grow up. Uh, Renton's change is finally I hate this. Concretized. Concretized. Um, by the comparison of the beginning scene and the ending scene, which are both in front of a mirror. See? Man, these movie people. Oh my god. That's insane. First we see a... Cadaveric. Cadaveric boy with a hollow face being slowly eaten by drugs. Then Renton seems to be healthier in a hotel room right before the money theft. Yeah, that whole that whole ending scene was very confusing for me. Um, but we react very unusually to most drugs, legal or not. M- morphine has zero effects regardless. Uh, yeah, it's like... Oh man, that's crazy how how different drugs can have different effects on different disorders. Like what? Obvious. Like brain is brains are interesting. Uh, Vicodin does the same for us. When his girlfriend breaks up with Tommy, he asks Renton for a hit. Uh, Renton says no at first, but then he offers money, and Renton gives Tommy the first hit, and Tommy ends up dying. dying so there's a lot of guilt not bob i could not i'm so sorry now i have to go back and rewatch the ending because i'm ridiculous i was like watching it like what's happening ridiculous also sorry for my ridiculous thumbnail i couldn't find any good like pictures of this movie um now this is interesting uh that would be interesting to see how it affects others with DID. That's what I'm saying, never wonder. Like, obviously, for, I'm sure with a lot of people with DID, benzos work great. But also, is it so, could it be so that certain D- drugs react negatively overall widespread? That would be interesting. Um, nicknames in street life, uh, Nicknames in street life is huge. Honestly, I love that analogy. I didn't even, I didn't even realize that's insane. Um, 
If our spouse takes it, he's out for he's out for the court. Cannot function. I know a lot of addicts, or I'm sorry, people with substance abuse issues can relate. When people say that they don't like your drug of choice, you're like, bitch, what? <laughs> um, good, good that you have an adverse reaction that your husband or spouse does because good. We don't like addiction here. It's not fun. Um, and I know they're doing ketamine therapy for people with DID. Oh man, that's so interesting. Okay, what do we got here? Um, I agree with you that Transploiting is a kind of a coming-of-age film, uh, partly because they chose, uh, they have the Choose Life monologue in the opening scene. Mark uses the tongue-in-cheek monologue to justify his use of heroin as a kind of youthful rebellion. When he repeats it at the end of the film, it's more genuine. Um, and he, yeah, oh my god. Um, and he and shows he's moved away from his youthful youthful rebellion and towards the long term aspirations. Lit. Um, okay, yeah. So, anyways, that's pretty much all I have for today, you guys. I always feel so bad leaving you guys because I feel like you're vibing, <laughs> but I don't know. Um, I always say I'm gonna go live more, but I have some lives planned, so I got you. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Make sure, oh yeah, make sure to give the live a thumbs up, subscribe, turn the bell on, and comment below because it helps with the algorithm if you feel like you want to do that, for sure. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I hope everyone has a fabulous Monday coming in clutch, actually filming on Mental Health Movie Monday. And, um, I will be putting out, um, a freaking poll way sooner this time so that you guys actually have time to watch it just think just looking out for y'all just looking out oh my gosh you guys have a fantastic day i think that there's like a delay in the chat so i'm like okay bye guys bye guys and then you guys aren't saying bye and i'm like okay <laughs> like uh bye eric diddly darn dang not bob the troops never wonder um, thanks so much, Michelle. You're awesome. I hope you have a great week. Um, we had fun. That's amazing. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. As always, beautiful. Have a good Monday.